Hi guys, welcome back to the second episode of The Petit Talk Okay, I forgot my own series name <laughs> Okay, so growing up, I've always wanted to be a host for a TV show So I guess that's out of the window So I'm just gonna create my own series on my own channel In this episode, I have the same old guest <laughs> My fiancé is on the line, so he's actually on Skype right now. Today, because it's the second day of Ramadan, so we thought we're going to have um, a Ramadan talk. Uh, we will share with you about uh, our Ramadan tradition, our Ramadan activities. But most importantly, I want to talk about how the different generation gap in my family celebrate Ramadan. We are going to talk about four different generations. So first generation is my grandparents' generation, which they are born in the years of 1940s. And then my parents' generation, they are born in the year of 1970s. And then my generation, uh, I was born in the year of 1990s. And then uh, my younger brother and younger sister generation, which they are the 2000 babies. When it comes to Ramadan, uh, we know we have to fast for 30 days. Uh, but at a very what age that we start fasting. Um, so when I recall back, I started to fast at the age of four. Um, but obviously it's not like full fasting, it's like half day fasting. There are days that I would fast for the whole day but most of the days is just like until 12 and then I will break my fast. So that is how my parents trained me how to start fasting in the first place. So this is between the relationship of my grandparents and me, okay? So it, it like jumps uh, one generation. So um, when I started fasting, when I was four years old, I remember the first day of Ramadan, I had Maggi goreng. So for my saho, I ate uh, the Maggi goreng. So I thought, okay, I already kenyang. Okay, so the, the other struggle as a child was um, I, it's hard for me to wake up for saho. So I would be like throwing tantrum. <sighs> It's just so much hustle that my parents had to go through to make me eat. And I, you know, when you wake up in the morning, you just don't feel like eating because you're like, yeah, I'm full, I don't want to eat, I will fine. And then, uh, so my mom was like trying to trick me into eating. So she had Maggie goreng because we didn't get to eat Maggie for the whole year. You know, Asian parents, they're like, it's the noodle. No, no, Maggie, no, no. So... Uh, when she tricked me with instant noodle, uh, the Maggi goreng, I'm like, oh yes, I'm gonna eat. Um, and then I ate that, and then I had um, my milk. So I drink sustenance milk growing up. Um, and then every day, my mom would say, okay, if you don't drink milk, you're not gonna f uh, fast the whole day because you won't have enough energy. I don't know how true is that, but I so I drink the milk. But that day, on the very first day of fasa, so that's like my very first time to understand what is fasting. Number one, I don't know why I should fast. It's just because everyone else is fasting, so maybe I should do too. And then secondly, I'm like, it's freaking long of uh, the day without any food, without any drink. So I think most of the time, I just like feel thirsty. I don't really feel hungry. And then, um, so at the uh, in Malacca, because I grew up in Malacca, so the first day of Ramadan would be public holiday. So my mom would be home, and then I'm like, oh, Mama, I cannot tahan anymore. I would cry and throw tantrum. I'm like, no, no, I don't know what to do, I don't know what So my mom was like, okay, lah, kesian, this kid, kan? So I berbuka, berbuka, like, after Zoho, I berbuka dah. So it's like, I have my lunch, so that's my iftar. Um, another tradition of us berbuka puasa is we will always go berbuka puasa at our grandparents' house. So back then when Tok Abah was alive, um, so Tok Abah, Tok Ma, we will all like gather at, at his place tau, to berbuka. So my uncle and my auntie, they are not married yet at that time. Some of them are not married. So it will be like full house and we will eat our iftar together. So that day, I was like, I don't want my grandfather to know because he's a scary person, you know. 
So he will be mad. I know for sure he will be mad that I'm not fa- fasting. So every time he asks, like, are you fasting today? Uh, I cannot lie to him with that voice. I'm like, tak, tak puasa penuh, tapi puasa half day. He didn't take that as an answer. <laughs> He's like, huh? Tak puasa? Macam mana ni? Kenapa tak puasa? Dah besar dah. <laughs> And I macam, <laughs> I kena marah lah that time. So then they came up with the story of how they would treat their kids if the kids are not fasting. So this is a story between generation, my grandparents' generation and my parents' generation. When they did not fast, they, uh, okay, this is the true story that my father told me and then my grandfather told me. Uh, when my dad did not fast, I think he's like, at primary school primary school age and then he didn't fast so my grandfather would ikat him at the pokok yang ada kerengga so my dad would be like I have bruises everywhere sebab tak puasa and and another thing if you if you tak puasa you get out of the kitchen you tak boleh makan dengan orang yang puasa so you stuff lah you tak boleh makan until orang lain dah complete puasa dah complete berbuka dah habis iftar you kena kemas and then baru you boleh makan so that's how they are treated because they're not uh, berbuka so basically that's how the different generation uh, teaching their kids how to start puasa and then okay so my grandparents they stay at a place where uh, it is located 5 minute drive away from my house but growing up I Like I went to school and then my grandparents would pick me up from school. So I would just stay there because my parents are working. And then after work, they would just like come to my grandparents' house. So um, so during bulan puasa, this is like I still remember vividly. So during bulan puasa, uh, if I have sekolah agama, then it would be like very tiring. Uh, but we would have the tadarus, everything time bulan puasa. Uh, after that, When we came back home from sekolah agama, it finished at 6 or because it's bulan puasa, so usually they finish earlier at 5 something. And then we went back, uh, me and my sisters, we will go back and then there's like the smell of the food from the kitchen. So my grandma, she's a, she's a cook. My grandparents used to have a warung when they're like still young um, because my my grandfather used to be in army and then after he retired they they had a warung so at the warung they would sell um, nasi canai nasi lemak all the kuis so they they're really like a good cook and then um, you know you you sense this smell but you cannot eat well, as a girl in the family the girls are expected to to help Um, our grandma cooking in the kitchen or our aunt or our, our aunt or my our mom um, we are expected to to help each other out so because I'm like still young at that time when I was still at primary school so they didn't allow me to do a lot of cooking so what I did was just I would um, I would bentangkan the tika uh, the, the newspaper Um, because we will not have our iftar on the table tau. It's never on the table because we are a big group of people. So, and the house do not have like the long table for everyone. So, we need to pentang tika and makan ramai Which is like, that will only happen in Ramadan. Which I really, really, really appreciate and really miss right now. Because we do not get to have that this Ramadan, unfortunately. So, we have that. And then, okay, so uh, after we take the food and then we, we the girls, the, the young girls yang akan susun and then we like tutup guna tudung saji and basically we wait there. So another thing that I would do, maybe I would watch TV or like finish up my homework ke apa. But uh, when it's like 7, so if the bubuka puasa is at 7.20, so at 7, My grandfather would like shout like with his general, um, the army general voice. He's like, Dah letak nasi belum? <laughs> and then we would like run to the kitchen and then put nasi for everyone. So as the girls, we would understand how much portion of rice that everyone would eat. So if Tok Abah, my, my grandfather, it would be like a lot. 
And then uh, if my my dad will be a lot, all the guys will eat a lot. And then girls, you'll be like, eh, letak sikit je, sikit je. So we put like sikit, sikit. And then, and then we put the air. So usually for drinks, uh, it would be my grandfather would do it because that's his specialty. Uh. Um, the apa kadang uh, he would do ikan bakar. So all the macam not normal cooking, he would do it. So he would be the one helping in the kitchen or he would make the drinks. So the drinks uh, usually kalau just like sun quick drinks, uh, apa orange juice tu kita orang yang buat lah. So um, we would bancho and then uh, it's a syrup ke apa. But if it's syrup bandung, oh god, I tell you, my grandfather's syrup bandung is the best. Like syrup, oh sedapnya. So, uh, and then an- another thing that I remember growing up is the the ice. Like you will bring uh, like packets of ice cube <laughs> just for berbuka because you need you need to have cold drinks. If not your Ramadan, your iftar is not complete. And then, uh, so we would like pour drinks for everyone. And then there's like uh, specific seatings for everyone. So my, my grandfather would sit at that side. And then next to him would be my grandmother. And then next to my grandfather would be like, oh, my uncles, my dad, my uncles, and then all the boys. And then all the girls, we need to sit near the rice cooker. <laughs> so we bring the rice cooker down. And then siapa nak tambah semua, all the girls lah kena letak uh, tuangkan sorang-sorang. I don't know, some, okay, maybe in the modern age, people would think like, um, apa mana boleh, you know, girls, girls je yang buat, guys tak buat, and whatever. But I don't know, I never feel like anything wrong with that tradition. I kind of like it. Because, um, tah macam, uh, it feels like more satisfying if we do it. <laughs> And then, okay, so, and then we eat. So, we will, uh, someone will recite the prayer. So, masa tu is usually my my grandfather. Uh, okay, so, uh, another thing, masa nak berbuka tu kan. Uh, so, everyone dah tunggu, okay. Tengok-tengok jam. Pilih lagi, like one, min- one minute, one minute lagi kan. Then, kita orang pasang uh, radio RTM. So, RTM Melaka punya. And then, uh, Azan, uff, I tell you, bila azan tu semua orang macam tak sebab macam doa, minum air dulu. <laughs> and then macam doa, um, and then seorang akan uh, being in charge to turn off the radio after the azan is done. So we turn off the radio, then we makan. Makan, 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 makan. Uh, and then siapa nak tambah, uh, pass to the girls and then the girls will put it and then pass back. Um, but also the good thing is that uh, kita orang dah letak food dulu before 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 azan. So Uh, usually we would pass the food to the elderly first, so they they will put their they would choose their their lauk first, and then only it comes to the kids. So, um, bila after makan, uh, okay, so ne- no one got up to like wash their hands out because we have that that place to wash our hand. And then uh, this is another thing yang my grandfather did lah. So he would like wash his hand, guna air masak after makan, like in his plate, and then he would drink from it. I don't know why. Until this day, I don't know why he did that. But he said that it gives him strength, in a way. Oh, So he said to get the blessing of all the food. So, so um, I only, I've only seen him doing it. He's like, not uh, any other person. And then, okay, so dah ab- ab- habis makan. So everyone, like all the guys will go and pray ke apa. And then all the girls, hmm, kita lah kena ni, uh, collect all the pinggan and then bawa pinggan to the to the sink. And then dekat sink is always my aunt, uh, my youngest aunt, Achu. She, until now, even she's married ke apa, she's the one yang masuk pinggan sampai sekarang. And then um, it's always like a routine for me and my sister. Kita orang yang akan like uh, kibas the, the tika and then uh, sapu and everything. And then my grandma, she won't do any cleaning because she already cook. So she, she would like pray and then get ready to go to tarawih prayer. So my grand grandparents, they will never skip a tarawih prayer. Like they would go to the mosque for tarawih. Um, and then sometimes they would take us along. And and when we had to go, I remember masa kecil, I I was so sleepy like I cannot. I I don't remember if I complete the whole thing. I just like do like a zombie. 
So I don't really appreciate Tarawih at that time because I, I, we just follow and tag along, right? Okay, so uh, another tradition was like when it's like one or two days before Raya. So everyone from uh, my aunt my, or my uncle who lives far, they would go back to Malacca and then uh, we would have our iftar together. So it would be like a huge group of us. And because we're huge, so the normal setting area for for eating too, that's only for adults. And then for kids, they're like special place in front of the TV, <laughs> just for the kids. Uh, those who do not puasa, okay, they they will sit there. And then siapa puasa will sit over here, and um and then it's fun lah, so much fun because so much food. Uh, even though we already cook and sometimes we go to the Bazaar Ramadan just to buy all the kuih. Um, but our family tradition is to only buy kuih from the place that we know. Sebab we tak nak kena tipu. Bulan puasa kan everyone sells everything and not everything is sedap. So that's that's fun lah. I mean, Bazaar Ramadan is so fun. Um... That's about my family tradition, what we will do. And another thing about Ramadan, uh, what we will do, my parents would take us to the shopping mall to buy baju raya. <laughs> That's another good good Ramadan tradition that I will always treasure, to buy baju raya. And as a kid, your baju raya, baju kurung is only for the first day. And then second day, third day, you dah pakai baju biasa dah. So uh, my mom really... She's really into fashion, so she has like so many different kind of clothes for us. She will, um, she will make us like try it at the store, and then balik to try again. <laughs> oh, we need to do like catwalk after <laughs> when we reach home, though, just to have a feeling of wearing new clothes. Lah. it's so fun. Oh, okay. When I was twelve, my family moved to the UK. So uh, that's another, that's like the first time ever we we celebrated Raya and Puasa in a foreign country. So that time it was October if I'm not mistaken and it's already autumn. So during autumn season it's already cold, like colder than Malaysia definitely. So we, when you're cold, when you're when you are like in a colder weather country, you get hungry faster. So I don't think I puasa penuh when I was in London. Um, we we not puasa penuh, but that's like the first time ever my mom cook for us for iftar because all this while is always my grandparents, is always my top mak, and then now it's like is that my mom had to cook. So my mom, we had, uh, sometimes we would do like long distance call with our grandparents and then asking them on how to cook certain stuff. So it's fun lah. My mom actually, she's a good cook, but she's just lazy to cook. She admitted herself. I don't like, <laughs> I don't put it out there just for the sake of embarrassing her. She admitted. She hates cooking. She hates the process of of like cutting everything, blend everything, or she hates it. So she she prefers like go to my tokmak house and eat. That's one lucky lady because the mother-in-law cooks everything. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Growing up too, we had our great-grandparents, my Tok Aki and Tok Wan. So he he's super close to his grandparents. So growing up, we were also close to them. Before, so they passed away when I was... So my Tok Aki passed away when I was 10 and my my Tok Wan passed away when I was 13. So so we we still had memories of them and so bila berbuka we we berbuka at our grandparents place um at like A in Merlimau for example. And then um my grandparents house uh, my great grandparents house is closer to my place. So after berbuka we would go, uh, we would go to my grandpa- great grandparents' house, my Tok Aki and Tok Wan's house, just to visit them. And usually they're not around because they went to the mosque, but we would just stay back until they they came home. And then uh, they would serve us some tea and then uh, a lot of other kuih that they got from Moray because they are extra. Because my great grandparents, they are 
the one that preparing the moray for for the nearest mosque and they also um, they also like prepare the food and they also hold the key to the mosque so so basically came back a bit late um, and bring back extra food for us so that's really nice and um, my my great grandparents uh, my tok wan she's also a good cook oh she she made the best chokodo and the best sambal hijau yeah so so i really missed um al fatiha so um this is the story of me celebrating the first ramadan outside of ssp and i thought i would cook, i would i could go back home you know i'm no longer in in boarding school so i wanted to celebrate my ramadan with my family and then because it's freaking the freaking state law that selangor doesn't allow people to take public holiday on first ramadan i would have to stay back in marabanting so i cannot go home so i was homesick and i crave to eat tom yum and i was like i cried I cried so much that I'm like I want to eat tom yum but there is no grab food back then there is no food delivery there is no cafe opening at the college area you just have to eat whatever the dining hall is providing you so so I cried I cried to Wahai I cried to him I'm like oh I'm so homesick I want to eat tom yum blah 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 blah, blah, blah. Back yeah, back in two thousand thirteen, and then and then okay, so I didn't get my tom yum obviously. Um, and then one day, uh, at the very first day of Ramadan, also that night, I was studying, um, and then I received a WhatsApp from Wahai, <laughs> from Wahai, telling me that, uh, uh like sh- he just sent me a picture, so I downloaded the picture. And then it's a picture of him at our college concourse area of Maravanting, and I'm like surprised. Like, what are you doing here <laughs> with no tom yum? But <laughs> but he made the effort to come and like, and then he belanja me chocolate, chocolate, and I uh, I what what I was that I yang in in Fnantin. I sing kuang, I sing kuang, and he 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 blanja me uh, chocolate and I sing kuang, because he likes I sing kuang and he thought I would like it. I don't. <laughs> But the thoughts of him coming all the way from Shalom, all the way from Shalom to Banting, I, like you had to take a multiple train ride and then taxi, and he had to go through all that struggle just for me. So that's one of the sweet Ramadan memories. <laughs> and later after that when like 2014 2015 um, we had like our iftar iftar dates i still remember that dates too because he wanted to take me out uh, but my dad had a condition for him like if you want to take this girl out for iftar you had pick her out and and drop her off so he did that so he so i stayed in melaka He stayed in PD and he drove all the way to my house and then picked me up and then we go to some good restaurant to eat and then he would drop me off at home and then he would go back to PD. Ah, oh, the kind of things love will make you do. <laughs> I hope he would do that until we get married. Uh, if not, I will like remember. I will unkit all of this. <laughs> yeah, that's how I celebrated my Ramadan growing up. And I feel like it's so much fun. I don't know, I don't know about you, but when growing up, when I look back to all the memories I had, um, it's actually all the good memories about Ramadan. Even though I I got scolded for not passing, uh, or I got um, all the all the hustles of like cannot go back home during Ramadan and had to go uh, be away from your family. But all of this actually is a, like a good memories to me in the end because when I got the time to berbuka with my family with my loved ones, I would truly treasure that moment. And and this year, 
it's like a different Ramadan altogether because we are in MCO period and we all are away from our family. So thank God for technology. We had been Skyping every single time during uh, sahur, during berbuka. Okay, tak sahur lah. During berbuka. Um, and even just now, I had to delay my video recording because my dad always calls us on Skype because he misses us. He's not in Malaysia right now, which is sad. And and uh, my sister and my my sisters and my mom, they just got back and they're like in quarantine and everything. But but we're all in Malaysia except for him, so which is sad. Um, I hope that he could go back for Raya, but we don't even know if we could celebrate Raya, right, this year. Um, so I have question for Wahai now. Ah, I have question for you. It's always you asking question. Okay, so my question is, um, at what age did you start fasting? Uh, fasting? And at what? Uh, and then you pass up penuh kata. And what's your favorite memory of Ramadan? Okay, so I started fasting. This one is based on my mem- my memory lah. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, when I was four years old, uh-huh. but when was it like half day and not full. And the next year. Uh, I did was uh, almost full. I think twenty seven days lah in Ramadan. As someone who's forgetful, you still <laughs> remember a lot. The, the one, uh, yeah, twenty seven days full day. And then, you know the 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 driving factor. I think it is because uh, my parents used to say, if you was you will get one ringgit each day. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So, the money, the, the, the reward. The money that drives you. Yeah, the reward that drives me. Because, you know, that time, as you said just now, we didn't know the the true meaning of fasting. So, just, you know, being kids, follow the crowd, enjoying the life. Okay, and for your... Third question, is it? Mm, what's your favourite ma- Ramadan memories? My favourite Ramadan memories will be... Uh, during the iftar moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, same as you, I think. Because we have our... This one happens when... Actually, each... Each uh, end of Ramadan, we will go back to our home. My okay. parents' hometown, my dad's hometown, which is in Great Pera. No, no. Oh, Pera. Uh, this oh. one is in Pera, Great Pera. So, but, you know, um, it, it's been quite some time we haven't been there because my grandparents moved to Pahang oh. due to my ato. Uh, in Ninga, right? So, mm-hmm. that time in Greek, we'll, we, we will ha- we will iftar together mm-hmm. and we will... The procedure is the same as you. <laughs> we have our own place for generation like kids over <laughs> here and parents over here and including uh, our grandparents. Lah. So, it... Uh, I think it is it is the most happy moment lah. Happy, yeah, celebrating with others. Yeah. I feel like Ramadan really brings all of us together. Even um in the age of, like modern age nowadays, um Ramadan is not complete without your family. You know, like um at the age of this MCO period, for example, like I told you earlier, we would have like Skype call with everyone just to, just to just to have that that Ramadan spirit in us. Um, I appreciate the kind of tradition that we have, uh, because, you know, uh, sometimes some some of the traditions. They are not aligned with what our religion is asking us to do. 
Uh, but when it comes to Ramadan, I feel like everything is okay. <laughs> oh, another Because thing, another thing. The sweet uh, memories in, for me in, during Ramadan is by going to Bazaar Ramadan. <laughs> so, oh, oh. there's a lot and a lot of food which you cannot see and buy, but you cannot eat that time. But uh, it's a sweet memory lah for me. Especially you know, in in Greek lah. I suka okay, pergi uh-huh. Bazaar Ramadan there. Oh, You know how like certain food to me like macam ada certain food yang valid during Ramadan je. Like macam other than that you won't eat it. What food ah? Okay usually for me is roti john. Like I will only eat during Ramadan. Like because I know masa bulan puasa baru dia sedap. <laughs> And then uh, murtabak. I don't like it kalau time bulan puasa you serve rendang. Like, tak boleh. You need to have like that limitation. Rendang is only for raya. <laughs> so, I I like I won't eat rendang during Ramadan. It's only for raya. It's meant to be for raya. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, and then another thing, Wahai. Oh, on on the topic of like the drive to puasa. So, I guess um, growing up also, my parents did that to us. That we had to uh, if you want the money uh, you have to puasa penuh so like one day one ringgit um and i think that goes that 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 teaching is actually passed down to the next generation because i just had a call with my cousin my baby cousin uh ifa and she's like nine now uh, so i want to encourage her to puasa So she, so I told her like if she puasa penuh that I would give the ringgit to her for duit raya. But being a, a smart kid that she is, she's like you don't even come back. Uh, and how would you give me the money? I'm like eh, there's something called like online banking. I could transfer it to your mom. Ah, uh, what's your plan if you want to train your kids? What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> how how do you okay. want to? Uh, implement or apply the practice for your kids, you know. So um, I okay. I plan strategically with my aunt, with my aunt just now on how to train her youngest youngest kid to start puasa. So because I know, I am not a morning person. I always like I always like threw tantrum when I was child when my mom tried to wake me up. So, I think I would like to start off uh, teaching my kids with like telling them about the holy month in like a storytelling kind of mood before they have the the they are at the right age to puasa. So I would tell them about this holy month and all the miracles that happen, and then um, all the things that you could gain just to fast. In this holy month, and how, why you should appreciate this month, and yada yada yada, and then when that month came, I'm like, okay, so the month has arrived, so maybe we should celebrate it. How? Okay, you have to follow me. So I, I would fast. So what is fasting? Fasting is that you don't eat or drink. Um, so this way you would understand what the poor would feel if they are starving and everything. So. But I won't push them to like puasa right away. So maybe at the age of four, I will introduce the idea of puasa to them, and I will make them puasa for like half day. And then I would say, okay, you can drink, but you cannot eat. Okay, what would you feel? And then like it's like gradually. I don't want them to like think puasa is like a burden. You know, I want them to to have this process like a gradual process, uh, so they would they would take it. In a nice way, but maybe I would do the, uh, the driving factor, one ringgit one day, <laughs> because I know this kid has both DNA, my DNA and yours, so um, uh, that kid would be money driven just like you, <laughs> so that is how my family learn, or appreciate or celebrate Ramadan, and um, I feel like we might have. Common tradition or different tradition. I would love to hear all of that from you. Uh, share with me all the great Ramadan tradition. Maybe we could implement that in our family in the future. And 
Um, I know this year's Ramadan is going to be so much different because there's no Ramadan, uh, Bazaar Ramadan, there's no um, going to my grandparents' place just to eat their food. Um, there's no celebrating, uh, there's no Burbuka Puasa every week with your friends. Like you have all this like weekend that you want to go, all this restaurant that you want to go or like, like all these good restaurants that have Ramadan offer. But uh, just to let you know, we also have a lot of online initiative that a lot of companies has done. You can order food from GrabFood if you want. You can cook your own food. And you can also order from FV Bazaar. Um, they have great deal on their food. I've already planned on ordering one. Uh, I tried to order today, but they're unfortunately out of stock. Hopefully, uh, in this Ramadan too, we will increase our ibadah and um, fulfill the kind of uh, aim that you want to fulfill when this, uh, during the start of Ramadan. And we could all enjoy um, the new way of celebrating Ramadan and we will all be blessed and showered with God's happiness and all the good things of Ramadan. Thank you so much guys for watching. Bye!